Alhamdulillah. On behalf of the Islamic Center of Davis, we would like to welcome uh, every and each member of the Davis community to our mosque. And uh, before we start as a, uh, our religious, religious tradition, I would like you to hear uh, verses from the Quran recited. Maybe this is your first time, maybe not. But from one of the uh, young generation at this mosque who almost working on memorizing the entire Quran. So if we could uh, give him our attention, it will take less than a minute, hopefully. If, if he can go fast. <laughs> then I'll try to translate after he finishes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابٌ رَّحِيمٌ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ جزاكم Thank you. Um, that was a recitation of the Quran and the verses that he chose before I start uh, my speech and I know a lot of people are waiting to hear what I have to say today especially me I know I know so I'm gonna be very brief and quick so we could move on to the, the rest of the program uh, the verse that he, he chose without me telling him anything so it has to do with the uh, the translation says "O you who believe stay away from much of suspicion or su suspicion indeed suspicion is false and do not backbite one another and do not have false accusation against one another if you do so is as if a person is eating the flesh of his dead or his brother's dead body if you do that if you backbite or uh, false sub, uh, suspicion or others and fear God be, and know that you are returned to him he is the most merciful then the next verse he recited it says all you people, all of mankind, this is all creation. We have created you from male and female to get to know each other. And we have divided you into tribes for one reason and one purpose is to get to know one another. And the best among you is the one who fear his Lord the most. It's not where you're coming from, what race, what ethnicity, what language. The, one, the best among you is the one who has more self-conscious about himself or God that Allah knows or God knows what in you or what you do. Welcome to the mosque and I hope, how many, this is their first time being in a mosque? Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem. Okay. That's a problem. This, this is where, where it all starts. As we said, we, we don't get to know each other much, that we pass through this building or other buildings every day and we don't know what's going on inside. What's going on inside is what you see now. You came in, <laughs> there's nothing special. It's a hall of prayer. We have kids who recite the Quran and they learn it. Before I start any of that, I just want to make something very clear. And this is going to be, hopefully, my last time. Okay, I, so I want to make it as clear as possible to a lot of people who have heard my sermons on July and especially me and we know it, it rotates all around then it comes back to me so the sermons on July when, when some people have heard the wordings and they thought whether it was misconception misunderstanding wrong whatever it was they thought that I was calling for uh, the genocide or I was using anti-semitic words 
here I am today in front of the everybody, saying it very clearly, and I hope that everyone would listen to this, religiously and a personal belief, I have never, or will, okay, not now, not in the future, not in the past, have called for the genocide of any group, not the Jews, not the Christians, not the atheists, not the people without belief, or never. Not just because to please anyone, because the religion commands so. We have a very clear verse in the Quran that I like to start with. This verse clearly states our commands that came from God. These commands, no one have the choice to say, well, I, I'll only go with three, but not all five, or maybe two out of three. We can't. We take it as a package. Command says, and this is the verse in chapter five. It says, O Muhammad, call upon your followers and recite to them these commands. Number one, you worship God alone. You do not associate a partner with God. Two, you respect your parents and obey them. Three, you do not kill your children because of poverty, because God will provide you and them. Fourth, you do not commit a sin, whether it's in public or hidden, open or hidden. Stay away from anything that will bring you shame. Fifth, do not kill an innocent soul. Do not kill, you have no right to take or to kill an innocent soul. If you do so, then you have followed the command of God. So we can have that in the Quran clearly. We have another verse and people claim that we're calling for the genocide of the Jews or others. This is not true. It has nothing to do with the religion. It has nothing to do with my personal belief. It's part of the religious view that we have, that we hold. Why is that? Because there's another verse that if everybody understand, as God said, it was recited to Banu Israel, where we came from right now. We just came from there. It was recited, and that means you also follow that. That if you kill an innocent soul, as if you have killed all of mankind, and if you have saved an innocent soul, is as if you have saved all of mankind. Now we come together to work to save refugees and orphans, and this is saving an, a soul. So I hope I, I was very clear, and I hope I made it as clear as possible. And again, as I said, for the last time, okay, because I already said it enough and it's a belief, again, it's not to please anyone, not to make anyone happy. It's part of what we believe, how people interpret things, that's their own uh, choice. But because we came today for the, uh, the, the celebration uh, and the gathering to build the relation, I wanted to start Oh, I already started. That's forget that. That that part, <laughs> that part is gone. Uh, that's it. I wanted to start with a story of our prophet because most of you have not been to a mosque yet, or to, this is your first time. There was a person at the time of the prophet was known to be one of the greatest enemy of the prophet and the religion. That he launched over th three to four, three or four wars against the prophet. So he got captured at the last word, it happened. He, he came to Medina where the Prophet lived and his companions. So he was attacking them. They, they arrested him as a prisoner. Now the decision was made, where, where should we keep him? Okay, prisoner of war, where should we keep him? So some people suggested different, at that time they didn't have said prisons like the one we have today. So the Prophet suggested, he said, how about keeping him in the masjid? And say, okay, you wanna keep him in the masjid? He's trying to kill you. He said, yeah, I just tie his hands so he wouldn't go, and someone is always, always watching him. So this person came, the Prophet came to him the first day. The Prophet said to him, he said, do you have anything for me that you want to say? He said, yeah, I want to speak to you. The Prophet says, go ahead. He said, I have three offers. One, if you kill me, I have family that will take my revenge. So be careful. Two, if you let go, this, I will consider this as a favor and I won't forget it. Three, if you want money, I could pay you money. So the Prophet smiled and he left. That's day one. Day two, day three, the person is saying the same thing. 
third day when the Prophet heard the same thing from him, he said, that's all you have? He said, yeah. He said, then we'll let you go. The narration says he went outside, he took a shower, dressed nicely, changed his clothes, he came back to where he, where he escaped, where they let him go. So the companion says, now he's coming for sure for something. As we, we let you go once, we're not going to let you go, go twice. So they got him and he said, no, I want to talk to the Prophet. I, I didn't come for any harm. So the Prophet said, let him. He came. He said, what do you want? He said, I believe that you are the Prophet of God. So the Prophet says, why you didn't say so 15 minutes ago? Why you had to leave and then come back? He said, because I didn't want anyone to feel that I said that out of force or pressure. Okay, so that's why I left and I came back willingly. So the Prophet taught the companions a lesson that we need today. That he intentionally wanted this person to stay in the, mos in the mosque all three days just to watch what happened inside because nobody knows what happened inside. So when he sees the Prophet coming, leading prayers, talking to his followers, people, how people respect him, how they talk to him, this person was sitting there watching. He wasn't doing anything. They were offering him food and drink and everything. But the point is that the Prophet wanted to say, let him watch. Because the problem nowadays is that a lot of people hear about us. They almost never hear from us. It's all from the outside. This what, is this what they say. So you're saying what they say, not what we say. And that's, that's the teaching of this story that I wanted to, to share. And by the way, he had no problem of a person, his enemy being in the masjid too. Because a lot of people are thinking, okay, are we allowed to come only today? Or because of this? No, you're allowed to come anytime. Okay? There is a verse in the Quran that states clearly, Allah does not forbid you from being nice, just, to the ones who do not fight you or cause harm to you, meaning in religion. You are ordered to be just and fair with them. That's, that's all of us today. We did, anybody came here for harm today? I, I, I hope not. But I am sure, sure I didn't do that. I didn't come to harm. We, we came all today to listen to one another. To, to build that relation, despite the difference, as the rabbi was speaking, we do have differences. We can just say, we agree on everything. We don't do that with our wives. <laughs> Sorry, she's not here. That's why I could speak. We don't do that. We don't, on, in, in the same household, you never agree on everything, do you? If anybody is living like that, I, just tell me how, you, how you're doing it. Even our little kids, I have a, a two and five year old, we don't agree on things. They're only two and five. So we do have differences, but we are saying, can we live together with these differences? Yes. And where do you get that from? Because our prophet, the one that everybody's accusing today, the one that people are saying this about him, we're saying he lived with all religion, all type of people at his time and he built a very strong relation and a good connection that led some people to follow him just because they saw how good he was. He didn't even call them. He had a neighbor that he used to throw garbage in front of his house every single day. So three days the Prophet opens the door, there's no garbage. So he said, okay, that, something is wrong. This person, it's not a habit. <laughs> So he went to visit him, he found that he was, his son was sick. So he said, he, went, he came to visit. So when the man saw him, he thought he came for revenge. He said, no, I, I came to check on him. He said, my son is sick. So he went and he kept talking and he told his son, he says, how are you feeling? He said, very sick, I'm almost dying. So he says, isn't time to believe in God? He says, I be, if my father says so, he's afraid. He said, his father said, you're asking me? Said, believe in him. He can't be anything but a prophet. The father didn't believe, by the way. But he told his son to do so. Just because the prophet went to visit someone who's sick. This is very simple. If we do that with one another, if we just check on each other. See, our neighbors here, we, we're being present for, what, I, I don't know, this must have been here for... Anybody know from the neighbors? 10 years? More than 10 years? There's... 20, huh? 45 years? No, 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 not not this official building. Okay, <laughs> this 
I, I am way younger than that, That's kind of, so I don't know if, if it's been here that long. But we've been here, and we, this is the thing that we want to assure today. Our president doesn't cause any harm to anyone. We are here, and we're, we're calling people to, what if we were to call people to, to worship God that we all, that we come to and we call people to do the same, to worship God, but none but God. This, this is our call. It's very simple. There is, there is not, it's not so much complicated that people wouldn't understand if people would listen. So I want to read to you very quickly a treaty. How many minutes I have? Done, huh? I'm already, <laughs> that's what they tell me every time. Like, I ask after I finish. So I want to read you a treaty that took place in Medina between our prophet, peace be upon him and peace be upon all the prophets and messengers that he made with the people who lived in Medina when he migrated from Mecca. Mecca, anybody know where Mecca is? Anybody don't know? Okay, so that's, no? Okay. Mecca is a, uh, a small city in Saudi Arabia. Now it happens to be in Saudi Arabia, it is in there. That where our pilgrimage, where we face, like when we face, we face, our prayer is facing this way. This is our direction to prayers. Why this way? Because this is the direction of Mecca. So we face that, we, we consider it the, to be the first mosque or first worship place to be built on earth by Abraham and his son. So when he migrated, there were people who were different faith living in Medina. They were Jews in Medina, tribes. They were Christians in Medina. They were non, people who didn't believe. They were non-believers. They didn't have faith. So the prophet, when he migrated and he set the, 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 the state, it became Muslim state. These people were so worried that what's going to happen now? This is a problem. So they set a treaty with one another that they brought their rabbis and their priests and the, their leaders and they sat with the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him and all the prophets. So he said, and I'm only, of course, the treaty is about 10 pages, so if you want to go back to it, or I could read it. <laughs> no? Okay, that means no. So that I, meant, I took from the treaty something that is related to what's happening now to show you that, again, I'm saying we do have differences in some matters and we, won't, we might not agree, but we can for sure live as a community. We can live together. We could protect one another. And this is not a favor. This is an obligation. So what did the Prophet say? He says, the treaty between Muslims and non-Muslims, meaning from the non-Muslim Arabs who live here, and the Jews of Medina, we put this together in writing so we could all agree. After praising God by the name of God, the most merciful, this document is between Muhammad, the governor of Medina, and the people who lived in Medina, the migrants and the people, the resident of Medina. Here is some of the, the things that they have mentioned just to keep it uh, very short. He said, whosoever among the Jews follows or lives with us and be with us or live with us or resident with us in Medina shall have our help, equality, shall not be injured or harmed, nor shall any en enemy be aided against them. That's the first thing we have to agree. We're living together. This is not you and me or you guys and us. This is all of us coming together. Two, whosoever, or, or uh, forgive me, I read that one. The, uh, the Jews tribe and the non-Muslim Arab tribes who live in Medina shall maintain their own religion. And the Muslims should maintain their own religion. The close friends of the Jews and others are as themselves. Meaning if you have a friend who coming to visit you, he is protected like you're protected. We honor your friend like we honor you. He becomes ours. He's under our protection. And if a person harms a person without right, regardless of their religion or who they follow, we all stand against that person, meaning the oppressor. So if the oppressor, whether he is a Muslim, Christian, or a Jew, or non-Muslim, whatever it is, if he oppress someone, we all, and, and this is the part that I like the most about this treaty, that the Prophet always used the word all. We all come together. And this is a treaty that we all agree 
This is not just me saying I'm forcing this on you and you have to follow it no matter what. So we need to realize that we live as a whole. We live together in one place. So he said, the Jews should, should be responsible for their expenses and the believers or the Muslims should be, or the Muslims should be uh, responsible for their expenses. But if an attack happens upon us, we shall all come together to assist one another. Your money, your business, you have it. We have our business, we have our money, this is our bank, this is your bank. But if it happens that an enemy is coming to attack Muslims, now it becomes all our money to defend. If they're coming to attack Jews or others, we're coming to, all our money comes as one to protect and to defend one another. This treaty, I would ask anyone, I, I, I don't want to go longer in, in, in the part. There is no force in religion. We don't force people to, to follow a religion. We're only here to tell people what we believe. Just want people to get an idea of how we think, what we believe, how we speak, how we react with one another. And I think today was a starting, let's say, to work on that path, on getting to know one another and continue on the work that brings this community together. If we really f have that focus, with all the respect to the people outside too, I'm, I'm saying it, all the protesters outside, the, the freedom of protest, they're giving, not just by me, by the Constitution, so Trump is gonna get upset. We can't say anything about it, just leave it. They're, they're protected by the, whatever. It's fine to disagree again, but let's listen to one another. Let's hear what the person has to say before you make your judgment. It's very helpful if you have like a face-to-face -face conversation like the one we see that I have seen people today that I haven't seen in my life. I've been in Davis for four years. I haven't seen them for four years. It's a, it's a good, maybe some people, of course, everybody has seen me already in, in the pictures. <laughs> but as a, as a person, I, that's, that's me. I'm here today carrying nothing in my pocket, has nothing to do. It's, that's our prophet's teaching. Our Prophet was described in the Qur'an to be the most merciful to all of mankind, not just to Muslims. He's merciful to all of mankind. We learn that from him. We learn how to be merciful from our Prophet. We follow his footsteps. We follow his tradition, his teaching. Everything that he says, we try to implement. When he says, your neighbors, your neighbors, your neighbors, your neighbors, so many times that he says, I thought that the angel, had, because the angel told him, take care of your neighbor so many times, he, he said, I thought that my neighbor would inherit from me. There is an inheritance rule coming that says your neighbor will inherit one third or something. Because the angel kept advising me to take care of my neighbor so many times. When we do that today, it's not a favor, it's an obligation. It's that we're following our religion, our foot, the footstep of our prophet, may be some blessing be upon him. And, and all the prophets of Allah. Thank you so much. I don't want to keep it that short enough, but I hope it got to the point and the statement that I wanted to say and the talk. It was very nice to hear you. I don't, I don't like to talk much. I do like to talk much, but not, <laughs> not today. <laughs> not today. I just do want to keep you here longer. Uh, our pleasure to, pleasure to have you at the, the masjid. If you have any question or any concern or any I hope the problems are, but we could just say history now, let's, let's move on. You know, we, we had something in the past, we're moving on together, okay? And we have something to do now that we need to focus on bringing all of us together and the community together. I hope we could do that. And I'm sure we will be able to do it after the walk today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So do we have...